What's up, guys? Uh, before I get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button on the bottom right hand corner of your screen, especially if I offer you some value in this video. But this topic today, I had to do a video on it. I was sent this last night by a couple people. It's a documentary called Watch the Water. And it seems to be causing an uprising, at least on Telegram. Uh, but I've seen it in multiple places. And the theory this guy has is that COVID is not a viral infection. That is, it is a snake venom infection. And that monoclonal antibodies are antivenom. Now, the definition of snake venom. Now, okay, I want you to think about this. Why are snakes not poisonous? Because venom and poison work two different ways. Venom only works when it's injected into you. So you have to get bitten or stung. Poison can be ingested. Theoretically, and I've actually seen a video, I think it was of uh, uh, Steve Irwin, that said this. And he took some of the venom and put it on his tongue and, and swallowed it. Doesn't hurt you. As long as you don't have any cuts anywhere in your mouth or you know, on the way down into your stomach, you're okay. The second thing is, now they brought up that it's from the king cobra and the Chinese crate, two of the most deadly snakes in the entire world, venom-wise. They also talked about rattlesnake venom. So I went and did some research, and I saw that seven months ago there was a video posted on YouTube about a professor from the University of Arizona saying that a lot of the same enzymes found in rattlesnake venom seem to be consistent with the enzymes that are attacking people's body with COVID. But that's really all he said, I think. It's just a theory. And I want you to think about this. Have you ever seen a picture of a rattlesnake bite? <clears throat> it's terrible. It completely destroys your skin and your tissue, and it stops your blood from clotting. Now, this man in Wash the Water brought up the, uh, what is it called, the uh, pro- I think it's prohibition time or prothrombition time or something like that. It's how long it takes for your blood to clot. And that cobra venom, along with rattlesnake venom, it significantly increases the time that it takes your blood to clot, which is true. It's it's one hundred percent true. But you know what else increases your time, uh, the time to, for your blood to clot? Here's a list of medications. You have aspirin, warfarin, other blood thinners, her uh, heparin, some steroids, antibiotics, estrogen medicines, any acids. All blood thinners. Any that thins your blood keeps it from clotting. That's why they give blood thinners to people who had blood clots in their hearts and stuff. They have stints. <laughs> Guys, my fellow conservatives, because I feel like, you know, the, all right, the left is always trust the science, and, you know, they can be contradicting on that too, but not even my fellow conservatives. Guys, just be smart about this. I say this all the time. There's only one unlimited resource in this world, and it's stupidity, but you can also throw gullibility in there as well. First of all, the documentary, the most part, is just some guy sitting on a couch talking to another dude, and he's very cocky-sounding and does not know what he's talking about. You can just tell right off the bat. Uh, it can't be... A snake venom infection because for it to be a snake venom infection then people had to be injected with it and a lot of people the majority of people i would say especially in 2020 in the first part of covid before the vaccine was created were not injected with anything most of my friends my brother got covid hasn't had a shot in i don't probably since he was real little <laughs> the other thing covid mainly affects the older demographic. That's why we have spent so much time fighting the school system and the government about not forcing our kids to get vaccinated, about not allowing them to wear masks, or not forcing them to wear masks, right? But the same people, which I agree, ch kids should not be forced to do any of that. No one should be forced to take the vaccine, period. And I don't think the vaccine is as effective as what they say. But... That doesn't mean we're going to create a lie around it. And the people that are, you know, standing up in the school boards, and rightfully so, you know, fighting to where their kids are not forced to wear their mask, seem to be the same people that are 
agreeing with the concept of this being a snake venom infection. And if it was, then that means that it, COVID would affect all demographics equally. You know why? Because everyone's impacted by snake venom, one. Also, there's a high risk of allergic reaction with snake bites and the antivenom when it's given to you. Antivenom is not necessarily a safe treatment. It just helps combat snake bite. So that means kids, young adults, old people, all equal. It wouldn't matter, but that's not true. And, you know, yeah, I got that from the CDC data. People are going to say, you listen to the CDC? Well, one thing the government has done is they have tried to make COVID appear worse than what it is, right? Because they want, from what everyone thinks, they want to force control on us. And there is an argument to be made for that, absolutely. But if they're trying to make it seem worse than what it is, then why wouldn't the data show that it is consistent across all age groups and not heavily skewed into uh, having severe infections or deadly infections in primarily the older group? So it's a, it's, it would actually be a contradicting argument there. Then they go on to say, okay, well, the monoclonal antibodies is antivenom. Your antibodies fight viral infection. It fights bacterial infection, fights fungal infection, your white blood cells, your immune system, right? Monoclonal antibodies, I don't know the science behind how it's made. Maybe it is antivenom. But it's there to help your body fight off COVID. I can tell you firsthand, COVID exists. It's real. You know what I didn't have? I didn't have the lung symptoms. I did get COVID after I got the vaccine. But most people I know that got COVID, not most, but I'd say half the people I know got COVID, you know, back in 2020, when there was no vaccine, they weren't getting a shot. They weren't being injected. This guy says, well, it's in the drinking water. It's not in the fucking drinking water. <laughs> Come on. Because if you drink venom, it doesn't hurt you. COVID is, is uh, contagious. Snake venom can't be contagious. It has to be a virus. Now, going back to, uh, you know, okay, you want to say that it's in the vaccine. You want to make that argument. Okay, well, they're, they're putting snake venom in the vaccine. Like I said before, do you know what rattlesnake venom does to your skin and to your muscles and your tissue? It t eats it up. You get – it dies. It kills it. It's Go look at pictures. It's disgusting. You can lose limbs from getting bit by a rattlesnake. And based off the studies I've read, and I can pull up here. This is from the um, ncbi.gov. So it's a government website here. And it's just – uh, this has nothing to do with COVID. This is just looking at the effects of a King Cobra bite. And they looked at nine infections, and it says that all of them had severe aggravation and inflammation, pain and swelling around the bite site, which could be extending to the entire bitten limb and adjacent body. It says that uh, in severe envenomation, Envenomation, sorry, tissue necrosis developed requiring surgical interventions and amputation. So it sounds like cobra bites are similar to that of like a rattlesnake. That means that if it's in the vaccine and they're shooting it in your arm, do you know how many people not only probably would have lost their arm, but would be walking around with huge chunks and scars in their shoulder? I can show you my shoulder. The only scars I got and the only screwed up things, I got a bone sticking up from a football injury I had. That's it. <laughs> if, so that's the only way they could get into where snake venom would be effective at all. But that's easily debunked because they're not injecting rattlesnake venom into anyone, I can promise you. It would show immediately. Now, they brought the common crate, uh, the Chinese crate, sorry. Are they injecting people with the Chinese crate venom? So the argument on that, uh, that didn't have the same effect. That didn't show anything at the bite site, right? And it does affect, it attack your uh, respiratory system and stuff. It freezes it. But it's extremely deadly, and again, it would be impacting people of all ages. Now, 
you could make the argument, well, more people are that are older are getting the vaccine. So that's why the data skewed that way. Okay, we can talk about that argument. That still goes back to the point that people were getting COVID long before the vaccine existed. <laughs> you know, and I love this one. He says, yeah, monoclonal antibodies and anti-venom is the same thing. When you get bit by a snake, What's the first thing they ask you when you get to the hospital? What kind of snake bit you? They make you identify the snake. Why? Because all antivenom is different. You don't use the same antivenom for an eastern diamondback rattlesnake as you would a Mojave rattlesnake. And that's the same type of rat. You know, it's all, both rattlesnakes. They're in different regions. They're different breeds. A copperhead is probably going to have a different venom than a cottonmouth. It's different. That's what a coral snake, they don't even make the antivenom for anymore. Good luck getting bit by one of those. So it's all different. It's not consistent. And by the way, the antivenom for the Chinese crate, I did some research on that. Very, very, very unreliable. I think monoclonal antibodies, if I'm not mistaken, work pretty good. Now, let's say monoclonal antibodies were antivenom. Let's just say it is. And does that just mean that they're only using it to combat a snake venom infection? Because if so, then all of us that argued, myself included, because I, I was on Joe Rogan's side with the ivermectin deal, and I think ivermectin should be widely used over the vaccine. But CNN, remember, said it was a dewormer. And that, that was its only use, is what they preached to us. And we said, no, it's not. You can use multiple things for you know, a whole bunch of different reasons. Like I said, you take aspirin to get rid of a headache, get rid of some pain, or as a blood thinner. You can use all kinds of stuff, right? And and that this, But he's saying the same compounds are found in both. So I guess that is contradicting if you thought ivermectin could be used for multiple reasons, but now the anti-venom or the monoclonal antibodies, if it were anti-venom, can't. It just has to be used to combat a venom infection? Here's the other thing. The risk of allergies for the antivenom as well is actually, I think, more of a risk than the actual venom itself when you get bit by a snake. So remember that too. Going back to them saying that the same compounds are found in, uh, you know, same enzymes are found in uh, the venom as it is in COVID. It attacks the body the same way, blah, 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 blah. Well, Sugar's found in both alcohol and candy. Did you know that you eat poppy seed bagels? And poppy seeds and poppy plants is what's used to make heroin? You can actually fail a drug test if you eat too many poppy seeds. Doesn't mean you're a heroin addict. It has the same compounds. Come on. We're not this stupid. We're not. It takes. I'm not a scientist. I'm a finance and economics guy, but it took five minutes of reading. Five minutes of fucking reading. Come on. It's an hour documentary of a guy sitting there and, you know, talking about this and this conflict of interest and all blah, blah, blah. And I think it's a, a wa- it's an infection in the water and all that stuff. It can't be. It's, it's impossible. Then everything long before this that we've known about snake bites, like hundreds of years, would be null and void. No, come on. Let's be smarter than this. Look, I know we don't like Google. I know Google censors stuff, but Google is still a hell of a tool. If you don't want to use Google, go to freaking uh, DuckDuckGo. Go to, um, hell, I don't know. Any search engine, you'll find this. It doesn't matter. If you got a way to get reliable sources, go go there and research it. It's there. But don't use just uh, your local conspiracy theorists sending you information from some random blog about how this is, you know, everyone's suffering from snake bites. And, you know... The last thing I want to bring up with that. Do you know how many shots have been given out? How many vaccines have been given out? <laughs> millions and millions and millions. And probably over a billion doses. Easy. Do you know how much snake venom they would have to extract to get that? And to do all the research? There's not enough snake. There's not enough king cobras and Chinese crates and rattlesnakes in the world to keep that going. They have a hard enough time as it is getting enough venom to create the anti-venom 
for the, the small percentage of people that actually get bit by a snake. And you think that they're mass producing this stuff inside of a vaccine that they're buying billions of doses on and trying to force everyone in the world to get? No. Let's be smarter than that. So I'm going to end on that. I just wanted to do that video and debunk all this. Uh, and again, hit subscribe, hit like, share the video, and I'll see you next time.